Hey everyone, welcome back to Build Order Tutorials. This time we have kind of a fun build for the Protoss players out there against any Terran opponents. It's a Colossus drop, not something typically seen, and it is going to be shown to us by Zest. Very different from how he usually plays, but uh, certainly a fun build to try out on the ladder. Build your first pylon. Chrono your nexus while you're building probes, then get a gateway and use that probe to go ahead and scout. We're going to be providing a little bit of adept aggression in this build. Get an assimilator. Go ahead and put one probe in that gas and then rally the rest of them into it until you're fully saturated. Your probe should be on the other side of the map now, scouting and seeing a barracks building at the front of their base. If you don't see it, they're proxing you. Now grab a 7x core as soon as that gateway is done. Don't build any probes. Hold off. And then build your nexus. And then get back to building probes. Get a pylon. From here on out, just remind yourself, don't get supply blocked. And another assimilator, which you will also rally in your probes to saturate that one. Start up an adept and chrono it, and then also get warp gates. All the simulators should be filled with probes. Get another Adept and Chrono that one as well. Go ahead and push back that Reaper. Get a Robo. With your second Adept on the way, you can go ahead and send your first Adept out to the other side of the map. When you can, build that third Adept and Chrono that one as well. You'll be sending all your units across the map at this point, continuing to build probes behind this aggression. If there's a bunker, there's not much you can do. Just continue shading and scouting the high ground. Grab a gateway and build a stalker. Chrono the Stalker and build an Observer from the Robo while also grabbing a Robotics Bay. Get a Warp Prism. Chrono the War Prism. Grab both gases at the natural. Remember not to get supply blocked. Ideally, your adepts are still alive and scouting the front base to see if they're doing any type of push. Now build your Colossus and Chrono that one as well. go ahead and hide your warp prism or even use it as another scouting tool like Zest does here. Grab two stalkers. Get Gravitic Drive, otherwise known as Warp Prism Speed, from the robotics bay. Keep 
here we have a bit of a cheeky push from the Terran. Grab another two stalkers, as you don't have a lot of units right now. The one of mine drop is uh, typically hitting around this time, so just be prepared to pull your probes. At this point, your Colossus is out and can help deal with everything. So clean everything up, and then go across the map with your Colossus and perhaps even your Stalkers, just like Zest does. Send a probe to your third base. Go ahead and Brono Warp Prism speed, so it's done. Get more Stalkers with your Warp Prism, we're back at home. And around now, 5.30, you should be attacking and dropping both, either, whatever, and grabbing a third Nexus behind this. You're also doing some scouting with this, so in this case, SC is a third CC, that is important information. Two more Stalkers built at home to deal with the Liberator, just a good idea. Continue building up your army count. Zest does not stop making probes, even though he's fully saturated and waiting for his third nexus. He's gonna oversaturate and pull those later on. Around now, around six minutes, grab a Twilight Council and a Forge. And two gateways. Chrono your Nexus. That's one Chrono per Nexus. Start up in Immortal. Continue harassing and scouting. With your buildings done, start a plus one attack and charge for your zealots, and also start a Templar Archives. Get your gas at your third base and continue to macro. Now on to the build discussion. All right, so the strength of the build. Early Adept Pressure can keep Reaper off of scouting. So in this particular instance, the build opened with Adept Aggression. We got that to next core before the Nexus, and we chrono out all three Adepts. That can actually do some serious damage to a Terran who doesn't build a bunker fast enough, but also can just keep the Reaper back at home if they're not very confident in their defenses, which keeps you and your Colossus drop pretty secret. It's a non-meta build that can surprise your opponent, so you're keeping these secrets, and they're probably guessing what you're doing but aren't quite sure, and then suddenly a Colossus drops into their main base? Yeah, they're not going to expect that. It can be molded into a robo-first macro build or a disruptor drop. You know, disruptors are even a little more fun than this, but this also is one of the starts to just a typical macro robo build, except that you would be getting like a faster forge and maybe a third nexus faster and, and so on and so forth. But it's a good start for the first five minutes. And it also keeps pressure on the opponent. So you start with the adepts, then you do the colossus drop with or without the stalkers. They get one moment where they can do some damage to themselves, that is the what am I drop that we saw, so be prepared for that. You don't have many units, and you're going to have to pull the probes. But otherwise, you actually are trying to keep the pressure on them. At some point, they can say F it and just go across the map. They have enough reinforcements to take care of the Colossus. Be prepared to pull your Colossus back in that instance. But other than that, you're the one that has control over the map. So the weaknesses of the build. A depth pressure does require some good micro. If you don't have good micro, just go ahead and don't really concern yourself with the adepts and mostly just keep them outside of the base. Again, if they don't, if they have a bunker, if they don't have a bunker, you can actually tango with the Marines they're producing. But anyways, just keep them outside the base and use them for scouting because that's still pretty helpful. We want to see if they're doing any tank push or cyclone push in the beginning, uh, which will mean that you have to keep everything at home. Keep the War Prism uh, on Colossus, both either um, alive or you die. If you lose the War Prism and the Colossus, usually they do go hand in hand. You're going to be in a pretty bad spot, so that is another weakness. Not a lot of units to spread around, so we saw even as he warped in Stalkers to combat the Wood of Mine drop. I mean, even if your Depths are alive, they're probably on their side of the map. You just don't have a lot of units like you would if you open Twilight Council Blink and you're about to have Blink, so you can just start blinking around and dealing with stuff. No, you don't really have a lot of units. 
So just, you know, keep in mind to pull your probes first from the Wuna Mines. And if they have any other type of push on the way, then start warping in, maybe get a shield battery, keep your Colossus at home type thing. Talking about those tanks or cyclone pushes that, again, your adepts will hopefully see. But if it's just harassment, just be prepared to pull the probes and don't panic. This is scary to use against Raven builds, just because if you try and drop and they have a Raven that's going to interference matrix or warp prism, your Colossus will die. You can't pick up or anything when the interference matrix hits. You can't drop anything either, so if it hits in your warp prism before that, then it's, it's kind of okay. But we also have this problem later on down the line if their push is still pretty good when they have a Raven and you only are depending on a couple of robo units. So it can be scary to use, but it's not like it was a... It's not like it's a hard counter. Just be aware of the Raven power. Some tips and tricks. Get used to shading as soon as the shade is available. That is one of the quote unquote secrets of Adept Micro is that um, initially you're like, oh, well, there's not much to it. And then you try and do it and you're like, huh, this is kind of a little bit complicated. What am I doing here? Most of it is just using the shade uh, whenever it's available. So constantly threatening the Terran, forcing them to lift their depots against shades going up to the high ground or shading out while setting the Adept in. Those types of things can really make the opener of this build a little bit scarier. Keep the Warp Prism as far off the edge of land as possible to avoid lock-ons from Cyclones or just general damage from anything else. We did see Zest dip in pretty far into the main base a couple of times, but that is something that you'll want to do the more confident you are in this build and your general gameplay. Until you're confident, don't be so... Don't, don't think you're failing just because you only use the ledge of the natural to Colossus drop. It means that your Colossus is probably going to live along your side your Warp Prism if you can use its extended pickup range to the best of its ability. Bring the Warp Prism back to help with pressure. So this might include, uh, you know, midway being like, oh no, they're attacking me and pulling it back. Or it might include a recall, which you should have enough energy at a lot of points to recall. But yeah, just keep that in mind. Let that be your first instinct when you see something happening is to recall. Often when we see something we don't expect, we just go into a bit of like, deer in the headlights type mode, right? So just recalling can really help you out. A Colossus with or without the Warp Prism is pretty important, but especially with the Warp Prism, you can actually hold against a lot of pushes. Experiment with adding in Disruptors first or second or third, blah, 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 blah. The nice thing about build orders is that even if it's not particular to your situation, until like Diamond or Masters, just having the benchmarks is going to be good enough. So that's why I do this series. But the truth is, is that depending on how you want to play, or depending on what you see, you can actually change things up, right? So disruptors are fun, and they're something that you probably see other people do. Um, they're also something that's going to help you in case you are not expecting a push and suddenly it's there. Getting a disruptor second, for instance, instead of that immortal, or just getting it instantly instead of waiting like Zest did and you know, delaying your third nexus, that stuff's actually gonna be able to help. So it can be something you can go into, but if there's no push, then there's really not a reason. Just do what Zest is doing and really get that macro going. If nothing is attacking your Warp Prism, beware of the push, right? So if there's like two Marines, that's a little suspicious. If there's nothing and the SEDs have not come back to mining, yeah, they might just be pulling the SEDs and going, F you, I'm going to kill you. So that's also, again, where you're going to have to remember recall as your instinct and then collect everything in your natural base. You don't need a third base if they're going to attack you on two bases like that. So... You know, delaying that is the best option and holding up in your natural is the best option. Just be aware. If you don't see anything, either they're really bad at macro, which is possible, or they're about to attack you. So there you have it. I hope you guys enjoy using this build against Terrans. It's really fun to see Zest do something so uh, unorthodox for him. He's usually, usually a Twilight Council guy, but yeah, it uh, can certainly be fun and be a very different way to mix up your ladder experiences. So I hope you have fun with it. Thanks for watching. Please follow the channel and check me out on twitch.tv slash zombiegrub for some of the live uses of these builds that I can attempt and fail probably, but I can attempt with you guys. And I hope to see you again next week for more build orders. Bye.